So the first one that I've read by him was The Kind Worth Feeling, and sadly for me, this is my favorite one. So as much as I really enjoyed it, the fact that it was the best one and I've been like searching for that high ever since has been kind of frustrating, but it was awesome. You're following this man and woman that meet at the airport one day at the bar randomly, and they start kind of accidentally <laughs> plotting the murder of his wife, and things ensue. Uh, a lot of dark stuff happens, a lot of twist, but they did not feel forced. I feel like I've had issues with some mystery thrillers that tend to have so many twists just so they can say like, oh, you did not see that one coming, which obviously, but this one felt very natural in that way. Uh, a lot of shocking things that happened that I didn't see coming and I really enjoyed it, could not put it down. Highly recommend it. So this will easily be number one and you will see the rest. <laughs> I've been wanting to like one of his books as much as this one from the beginning. So hopefully the next one will be that one for me. Next one I picked up by him was Her Every Fear, which not about a week to continue. I read that one in 2017 and I don't feel like I've talked about it a ton on this channel because it was good, but it wasn't like blowing my mind as much as the other one. So I tend to recommend uh, The Kind Worth Killing first. But you follow this woman who uh, has been going through some trauma. She has anxiety and she switches apartment with her cousin. So she goes from London to Boston and as she's moving in, she realizes that her neighbor was murdered and she just starts having more anxiety. There's a lot of like being stuck in an apartment, uh, kind of freaking out. So psychological thriller. I overall did enjoy it. And it has been the one that I recommend after reading The Kind Worth Killing for a while, just because, but it's been four years and I haven't talked about it that much. So it kind of gives you an idea. Not a bad way to continue though. Ah, the next one I picked up was all the beautiful lies which is the one that i'm going to be having to include some spoilers which i'll put very clear on the screen whenever i start but i never finished the book so is it really a spoiler when i put it down at 60 percent your decision uh i listened to that one as an audiobook because i started with the ebook and i couldn't get into it it was really slow in the beginning so i decided to go with the audiobook and i still struggled i was bored when i put it down at 60 percent however the reason i was completely fed up and did not push through you know, to try and just at least know what happened. Uh, it was because there's not one, but two inappropriate relationship between step parent and stepchild. I like, I know we all have our own triggers, I guess, but I have read, I don't know, like 50, 100 mystery thrillers since starting booktube. And the one that are like weirdly sexual or like have these kind of topics, they don't work for me to turn me off. I am just not into it. Like incest is not a topic I want to read about. I. <laughs> No, like, let me just read to you. This is on Goodreads. This is the summary. It literally says, Harry has always considered his stepmother, Alice, to be sexy and beautiful. No, no, um, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I, I don't care to, no. <laughs> so uh, I guess this is where I draw the line personally. Feel free to read it, but uh, this is going to be easily at the bottom one. Did not finish it, so that kind of gives you an idea. But the reviews are not super great, like overall rating on Goodreads. So I think maybe other people didn't enjoy it, but I have no regret not finishing it. I don't think I missed anything. But yeah, that's my least favorite one. But if you have read it and liked it, please explain spoiler free in the comment section why. So maybe we'll convince other people to give it a shot but I won't. <laughs> okay, the next one, I am a little bit more on the fence. This is Before She Knew Him. And that one, after I had finished it, I was happy with it. I had giving it, I think, 3.75. I've rounded it up to four on Goodreads, mainly because the ending shocked me, like it surprised me, which I love whenever that can happen. But I feel like ever since, I've kind of just felt a bit more meh about it maybe because I don't remember the ending. It hasn't been that long though. I read it in 2019, but I already forgot, which you follow this woman, she's married, she's an artist, and she goes to work at her studio very often. And then she meets her new neighbors and the man is kind of suspicious. Uh, she sees one day in his uh, office that he has a tro trophy, a trophy, a trophy that looks a lot like a trof trophy. Why can I not say it? <laughs> she sees a, tro a trophy that looks like a that looks like one that uh, another man had like two years ago when he was murdered. So like she starts going a little like, she doesn't know if she's crazy or not. She has mental illness. So if you have issues with that being the plot point, uh, you probably won't enjoy it. Um, but yes, I overall was happy with it afterwards. So I think I'm gonna put it in third position. But, but you know how some books just don't stay with you? I feel like that one, is one of those. So even though in the moment I enjoyed it, I'm kind of just 
it's a little bit unmemorable. The next one, I'm frustrated with it because it started so good. So good. I thought this was going to be as good as uh, The Kind Worth Killing. This is Eight Perfect Murders. And that one, the plot, great. You're following this man and um, it feels like a little bubble in the beginning, which I like little town and things like that. So I feel like it worked for me. It's like winter, so like cold. He works at a uh, bookstore. So you get that feel that I love. One day he gets a visit, I think by the FBI. They're trying to make sure he's not the murderer because there's someone that has been following a blog post that he posted a couple years ago about eight perfect murders based on books, trying to, you know, attract more people to buy the books from the bookstore. And someone is following that list and they want to make sure he's not the one doing it and then maybe he can help solve it kind of thing. So great plot, but I hated the ending, hated it. Uh, I feel like past like 50%, it just went down and it just completely lost me. It wasn't necessarily surprising, it just sucked. So I'm kind of just mad about it to be honest and I think if I have to put it <laughs> on the list this is where things get complicated because of the next one I think it's going to be the second to last even though I gave a low rating to the next one I'm going to talk about <laughs> so bear with me but yeah overall I would be curious to hear what people think about this one uh because if you like the ending, you will probably just enjoy that one quite a bit more than I did. But yeah, I was just frustrated by the way it ended. The twist was just not good, basically. Last but not least, let's talk about Every Value Break, which is the last one that I have read. I read it earlier this year and I am very, very frustrated. Uh, I think I did like talk about some spoilers in the vlog that I did. So I'll link that down below if you are interested because I'm going to keep this spoiler free. You found this woman who is about to marry a rich man and goes on her bachelorette party and she cheats. And then whenever she comes back, uh, the man seems to be like stalking her or like things are weird. And uh, she goes on her honeymoon and things just, you know, let me just mention that honeymoon is on a island, an island with other rich, mostly men. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I was so frustrated with this book because the best way I can describe it, I, I literally have been think, trying to think about something better to say than this, but that's the only way I can word it. It feels like it wants to be feminist, but it comes off as misogynistic. That's, yeah. And like, quite frankly, the main character is dumb. Yeah. Um, and everyone I feel like in the book is a horrible person except like her mom <laughs> like everyone else like I don't mind unlikable characters but like there's a limit I feel like eventually you have to care about something in the story with that said uh even though I really had issues with it I couldn't put it down and I was overall happy with the way it ended so I feel like that's why in the overall rating it's not like dead last because I guess it was still good for that. So if you don't have the issues that I had with it, you might actually really enjoy that one. But personally, man, did it piss me off and I just wanted to like throw it as far as I could. So yeah. <laughs> so you might be looking at my list and uh, wonder, Emily, why do you keep reading more books by him since you've only really liked one? Um, because I, like I said, I'm hoping that I will find one that I really love once again. And Maybe it wasn't just a fluke. And like, even though like I didn't give them all five stars doesn't mean that I didn't get anything out of it. Like you don't need to always give books five stars to have something you liked, but yeah. But that does explain why I feel like I'm a little on the fence with him. I am stubborn. I keep reading his books. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I will be reading the next one, which I'll put, I think there's a title on the cover out. So I will be picking it up as soon as I can. Uh, but if I hate that one, then maybe I will give up on the author. But I do think that at least reading the first one, the kind worth killing is worth it. If you hate that one, then you might not <laughs> want to read the rest. But overall, these are my ratings. I would be curious to hear uh, your own actually list. Which one was the best one? Place them in order, no matter how many you have read by him, because I want to know. And if you have any reviews, especially spoiler free for other people, leave them also in the comment section. And if you have read the only one that I haven't read, please let me know if it's worth it or not. The ratings are pretty low, but it might still be worth it. I feel like mystery thrillers, it is so hard to recommend them because it's all over the place, but sometimes I really like the ones that get bad ratings, so who knows? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, let me know in the comment section which authors you want me to do a video like this. One of the next one is going to be Brenda, 
Brendan Sanderson. I was going to say Brandy Sandy. I got in a really bad habit of calling him that. I need to stop. But yes, I am planning on doing like a beginner's guide to him. I was trying to read as much as I could by him first, which I think I'm kind of getting to that point. So that's going to be happening this fall for sure. But yes, uh, let me in the comment section. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in my next one very soon. Bye. Lonely, you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies.